Welcome to the Militia Gaming Community. I'm Trigger, and this one is all about the 2017 Mini JCW Countryman in Need for Speed Heat. Let's go! Real quick before we get into the video, I just want to mention if you're looking for any of my builds or any information that I may have on Need for Speed Heat, you can go to my website. It's MilitiaGamingCo.com. There's a Need for Speed Heat builds at the top along with all of my best guides if you click the guide button and a link to our Discord if you're looking for a level 50 crew. But that's where you're going to find all the information at MilitiaGamingCo.com. All right, let's get into this mini. So the first piece of information I like to give you is the engine for this car and the fastest engine for the Mini is the 591 horsepower 3.8 liter V8. Remember it is the V8. There's another engine, a 591 horsepower 3.8 liter V6. And both engines perform pretty well, but the V8 definitely performs better, especially when paired with the seven speed gearbox. So on Arian, I was able to run a 258.9, which is actually really good for this car. I did not think this car was going to be as fast as it was. It definitely surprised me because it's got really, really good straight line top speed. I mean, it really gets after it on area. And when you get down to the bottom of the hill, you're doing 225 miles per hour before you hit that telephone pole. It is very, very good. So I'm very surprised to be able to run Arian under three minutes with this particular car. It was very shocking. So I'm gonna recommend this for track builds if you wanna use the Mini. It is it is fairly good. I mean, 258 is not like a super crazy time. Obviously that can be improved if it, there's a better driver behind the wheel. But for me, if you compare that with all of the other cars I've tested, it's actually pretty good. So I definitely like this track build. If you wanna use it, here's the full build. It's the 591 horsepower, 3.8 liter V8. Ultimate Plus Engine Parts, Ultimate Dual Turbo, 5x3 pound NOS. Then we have the Super Track Suspension, Sport Brakes, Elite Race Tires, Elite Plus Clutch, Elite 7 Speed Gearbox, and the Super Track Differential with NOS refills and NOS duration. And then of course, Steering Sensitivity, you're gonna put at plus two, that's two to the right, and Downforce at minus two, that's two to the left. Then traction control is off and on this one you definitely have to change it to brake it does not want to turn and it struggles with understeer quite a bit so you're going to have to really pay attention to your speed going into sharper corners otherwise you'll end up in the grass but if you can do that and you can use brake as your drift style you'll do okay all right let's move on to the drag build so for the drag build it's not that good it's ranked 95 out of 131 cars not super good it's 0 to 60 is 1.97 with an 8.90 quarter mile. Again, just the rank of that is just not good compared to the other cars. I really wouldn't recommend this for a drag build, even though it's an all wheel drive car and it's quick off the line, it struggles in the early gears, like first, second, third, fourth, just struggles to gain speed, even if you NOS. So it's just not a good car for drag racing. But if you do wanna use it, the full drag build is like this. It's the 591 horsepower engine again, one by 15 pound NOS with the Ultimate Plus engine parts and dual turbo, super track suspension, sport brakes, Elite drag tires, Elite plus clutch, Elite seven speed gearbox, super track differential, NOS refills and duration, and then steering sensitivity at two, that's two to the right, and downforce at minus five, that's five to the left. Traction control is off, drift style is on brake because it doesn't really matter for drag racing. All right, let's move on to the drift build. So this drift build actually reminds me a lot of my Evo 9 drift build, and it kind of is comparable to pretty much all of the all-wheel drive cars in this game. It just follows this really standard pattern with all-wheel drive cars when you try to drift them. So generally, in real life, you don't, <laughs> you're don't, you not going to drift an all-wheel drive car, although it's possible, it's just not something that you do. So in the game, you have to kind of trick the car into thinking that it's a good drift car. And you do that by putting the showcase suspension, the pro drift tires or the elite drift tires, and then the sport drift differential. Those three parts kind of trick the car into thinking it's a rear wheel drive car, even though it's an all wheel drive. So the full drift build will get you around 71,000 
points on average on this particular drift zone that you're seeing in the clip. What I do to test it is just run it a few times to warm up and then I record three separate runs of the drifts and then average the scores out and my average again 71 327 was actually my average. So it's not too bad. It doesn't score super high, but I will say the control with the drift build is actually pretty good. So it's something that if you really just want to go out and have fun and drift around, much like the i8 that we just did, you can go ahead and do that. It definitely feels good to drift and you can control the car just like you could on the Evo 9 build. If you don't have my Evo 9 build, I have a video on that. You can search it up. Just type into YouTube search bar, can't drift Militia Gaming Co. and it should come up. All right, let's take a look at the full drift build. It is the 591 horsepower, 3.8 liter V8 engine, Ultimate Plus Engine Parts, Ultimate Dual Turbo, 5x3 pound NOS, Super Showcase Suspension, Sport Brakes, Pro Drift Tires, Elite Plus Clutch, Elite 7 Speed Gearbox, Sport Drift Differential, NOS Refills and Duration, and then Steering Sensitivity has to be at plus 5, that's 5 to the right, Downforce has to be at minus 5, that's 5 to the left, Traction Control is off, and Drift Style is on gas. All right, lastly, let's take a look at the off-road build. So out of all the builds I do for these cars, I do four for each car, there's always one that really feels like that's where the car belongs. That's where this car was slated to be for this game. And off-road is where this car needs to live. It is very, very good off-road. It's ranked 22nd out of 131 cars. This is something that you don't see very often. It is very, very good in the dirt. I would say this car is meant to be a dirt or rally car for this game. I think that's what their intention was when they put it in. And when they did that, they actually made it pretty quick on the track as well. But for the, for the off-road, this car does very, very well. Like I said, 22nd on the rank, which is insane. I actually really like that we found another really good off-road car. So to be in the top 25 on off-road, that's great. All right, so the full off-road build on this is that same engine, Ultimate Plus Engine Parts, Ultimate Dual Turbo, and the 5x3 pound NOS. We go with the Super Rally Suspension, Sport Brakes, Elite Off-Road Tires, Elite Plus Clutch, Elite seven speed gearbox and the super rally differential, NOS refills and duration. And then I left the live tuning from the drift build because it felt the best. Steering sensitivity plus five, that's five to the right. Downforce minus five, that's five to the left. And traction control off, drift style is on gas. With that guys, I'm gonna end it, but I do wanna say thank you so much for the support on this series. I've had very consistent views for this wrong build series and I really appreciate it. My goal is to finish all of these cars in Need for Speed Heat before Unbound comes out. So we've got about 45 days until Unbound releases, and I've got about 30 cars to do. We're going to be going through these cars as fast as I possibly can in the next month or so. With that said, if you have any questions, you can send me a DM on Instagram, Twitter, or Discord. I respond to Instagram faster than anything else because I check it most often, but feel free to send me a DM on any of the other platforms. I really appreciate it. And if you wanna support the channel in an extra way, you can always leave a super thanks on the video that helped you the most, or you can become a member. And we have two different membership tiers. You'll get custom emotes, custom badges next to your name. You'll get members only posts, members only streams that I'll be doing. There's all kinds of benefits there, guys. It's either $5 for the Heat 3 membership or it's $10 for the Heat 5 membership. And while I'm at it, shout out to all the Heat 5 members. Thank you guys so much for the support. I really appreciate it. And that's it, man. I will see you guys on the next video. Trigger out.